Coming up on this special edition of William Penn News Now. Students and faculty alike are dealing with the rising cost of textbooks. Find out what some are saying about the worth of textbooks today. Living on or off campus has been a debate for many students as they try to figure out where to live for next semester. Find out the costs and benefits of both. And some students are having to balance the demands of college and working or playing a sport to help pay for their education. Find out how some students are handling the stress of both. These stories and more are coming up right here on William Penn News Now. Good morning and welcome to this special installment of William Penn News Now. As on today's broadcast, we will be looking into a very important aspect of college, the high cost of a higher education. I'm Jimmy Ott and thank you for joining us as WPNN reporters have been taking a deeper look into how much students are actually spending on their college education, where the money goes, and overall, if attending college is worth the cost. We start by taking a look at the rising cost of textbooks and with fierce competition between publishers and other ways to purchase books springing up with the increase of technology, Bookstores are having to increase prices in order to keep up, much to the dismay of students. According to an internal document provided by Follett, the company who runs the bookstore on campus, the cost of textbooks has risen by 812% since 1978, and some students at William Penn are saying the book's educational value does not match the money spent. Overall, probably not, no. Especially like that accounting book. We had to teach ourselves most of this stuff because it was an online class. so. Some books, you really need them to pass the class, but others, no. This point of view is also shared by some of the professors requiring the use of these books for their courses. This has caused some, like instructor of English Ashley Swanson, to openly show students different avenues to find the required materials. I'm really cognizant when I'm choosing textbooks of what the price is going to be. Um, I also always let my students know that there are ways to get them online that can even be a little bit um, more cost effective. Or in the case of some professors, like Assistant Professor of Education Stephen Henderson, who is starting to cut textbooks out of his courses entirely. I don't think all classes require a textbook. I think there is a significant amount of professional literature that is uh, published on a regular basis that can keep our students uh, abreast of what's going on in the field of education. Far more current uh, stuff than what a textbook uh, would be providing. According to the National Association of College Stores, students spend an average of $626 on required course materials each year, which has led many students to turn to renting books to help keep the cost down. I only rent my books because they're too expensive, because I had an accounting book that would cost $300 to buy, so I didn't buy it. I couldn't afford it. Swanson said students should only rent books they won't use again for their major, and recommends students do their research before buying to make sure they are getting the best deal. Talking to your instructor first is a really good option, um, seeing exactly what the book is going to cover, seeing if the instructor has an opinion on whether or not it's worth it to invest in this book for the long haul or whether or not they think it will just help to supplement this particular course. Henderson also said it is up to the students to find value in the books they purchase. Um, most classes you're going to get out of a class that you put into it. So if you don't value a, a big textbook and you buy it but you don't read it, well, then you wasted 120 bucks or 20 if you rented it. Another way students at William Penn can help keep the textbook costs down is to use their financial aid towards their books, which helps both the students and the bookstore get through the school year. Another cost that has been increasing throughout the years has been the meal plans Sodexo and William Penn University provides. And although the next year students will not see a rise in the cost for these meal plans, students might see a change in quality and ways to eat on campus. For students on campus, Sodexo and William Penn University provide a 14-meal-a-week plan, which includes $100 that can be spent at the Pat Cafe, or a 19-meals-a-week plan, both priced at $1,925 a semester. Broken down, each meal throughout the semester is priced at $6.50. However, that price increases depending on how many meals students eat at the cafeteria in a week. In an informal survey done by WPNN, we found on average students eat at the cafeteria less than eight times a week creating an excess of meals left over on their corresponding meal plans. In the past, Sodexo did offer a 10-meal plan at a reduced rate. However, that plan was terminated 
because of the lack of students purchasing it. One of the reasons students say they're not using the meals included in their plan is the student schedule not aligning with the cafeteria hours. To combat this, General Manager of Dining Services for Sodexo, Jeff Halverson, has implemented a returnable to-go box students can use to eat without having to sit down. Um, the students can come up um, and get it to go. Uh, we, try, we did implement a returnable to-go box, um, but we haven't had any, really anybody utilize that um, over the time. But what it was intended to do is for the student that couldn't eat, say on a Tuesday, Thursday because of class schedules or whatnot, that they could come up, get that to-go container, go fill it up, you know, go eat or go to class and then whatnot. But then like on Thursday or the next day that they wanted it, they could bring that back, we give them a clean one and then we wash it. For more information about future meal plan options and to go boxes available, students are encouraged to talk to Halverson or any Sodexo employee in the cafeteria. Living on or off campus has been a huge topic of debate for many students here at William Penn University. WPNN reporter Dino Landucci IV examines the costs and benefits of living both on and off campus in this report. When attending college, deciding to live on or off campus is a major decision when looking at the costs for each. At William Penn University, the average cost for living in one of the six on-campus living options is $1,625 a semester. However, meal plan is required for those on campus, making the cost for room and board $3,550 a semester, or $7,100 a year. While looking at other colleges in Iowa, the price of room and board at William Penn is significantly lower as the average cost for other schools are about $5,300 a semester, or $10,600 a year. Living off campus, however, can be less expensive depending on rental agreements and other expenses like food and utilities. According to an informal survey done by WPNN, students that live off campus on average are spending $6,465 a year, making off campus living more cost effective by about $600. Coy Russell, a senior who lived on campus his first year at Penn but has since moved off campus, explains his reasoning for making the move. The main thing was money and um, more uh, of the, the meal plan because I wanted to be able to cook my own food and be able to really watch what I eat and I can control that. And being an athlete, nutrition is one of the biggest parts. So if I can control my nutrition um, and I know exactly what's going into my food, then that was kind of the big thing. However, although on-campus living is a little more expensive, Vice President for Enrollment Management Kira Strong explains some benefits to living on campus. I think that especially for young you know, those students coming in as a freshman, um, to be required at this point to live on campus I think is really critical to them becoming involved on campus and um, understanding the resources available to them. Um, you know, a lot of colleges do have that requirement that at least first-time freshmen must live on campus and it's for that very reason. It's that being able to know your university on a better level, um, get integrated into the processes and procedures of what it's like to be a college student and provide some structure so that um, students can, can be most successful as they can be that first year. Overall, living on campus is a cheaper option for students who are able to pay rent and utility fees monthly. However, the benefits of living on campus are why some students that are able to move off campus are staying right here in the dorms. For William Penn News Now, I'm Dino Landucci IV. It comes as no surprise that college tuition has been increasing since the 1980s. However, according to a report from College Board, a nonprofit organization created to expand access to a higher ed education. Private universities are increasing their tuition and fee prices at a slower rate in recent years. From 1987 to 1997, the price of tuition and fees increased on average by 3.1%. In the next decade, tuition and fees increased by 2.9%, and from 2007 to now, tuition and fees increased by only 2.4%. Although tuition costs are rising, the rate at which they are rising has been decreasing throughout the decades. William Penn University is no exception to these increases, as Bonnie Johnson, Vice President for Financial Operations, explains why William Penn University's tuition will be increasing for the next school year by roughly 2.5 percent. As you know, costs about everywhere are rising every year. Um, we do have to increase um, tuition to cover increasing costs on the campus that we might incur as far as payroll costs or benefit costs and things like that. Johnson continues explaining where tuition costs are spent the most at William Penn. 
And our total budget is approximately $25 million. Um, of that $25 million, um, $10 million is for payroll. So $10 million pays for salaries and benefits for our faculty, staff, coaches. Um, we do have some newer buildings on campus, which we, you know, we have some interest and depreciation expense on those buildings. We have utilities expense on those buildings. We have repairs on all of our buildings. Um, but by far the, the largest percentage of our budget goes to pay for salaries of our personnel. Attending a Ford University, although expensive, can be extremely rewarding to graduates attaining a bachelor's degree with programs like financial aid and work study, as well as scholarship money, grants, and loans can make a higher education more obtainable than students may think. International students are also affected by these tuition increases, however. The enrollment rate for foreign students attending William Penn University has also seen a rise in the past years. Kara Strong, the Vice President for Enrollment Management, who has been helping William Penn University on recruiting international students from different parts of the world since 2005, says that not every international student has to play a sport to get a scholarship to experience an American education. So right now we have about 20 foreign countries that are on our campus and each rec recruiting class is a little bit different. Um, I would say as far as a dominant area, we do have quite a few students that come from the United Kingdom. Um, we also get a sampling of people from Australia. Um, Rwanda has been popular for many years, between five to seven new students every year for, from that country. According to Strong, William Penn University works with a few agencies for international student recruiting and is currently working actively with two companies that have consistent communication with foreign students. So far, William Penn University has five agreements with, signed with international students that are not competing in athletics and are looking to increase that number before the start of next year. Although some students come to Penn for the education, the majority of William Penn students are receiving an athletic scholarship. However, some are no longer participating in the sport they play. Mason Schrader has the details on how keeping athletic scholarships allows students to continue chasing their dreams of a higher education. Approximately 72% of William Penn students receive athletic scholarships. However, students who no longer wish to participate in a sport can still be awarded scholarship money. Vice President of Enrollment Management Kara Strong says William Penn's philosophy is to give students an affordable opportunity at an education. You know, our philosophy has been just overall, Archings University is opportunity, and a big part of that opportunity is being able to afford the education. So if a student no longer wants to participate or can't physically participate in an activity and they want to stay and be a good citizen and get their degree, then we don't want to create a, a barrier financially that they can't continue. Markeisha Yarbrough, a former William Penn dancer, is able to continue her education at Penn by keeping her scholarship. After deciding to focus more on academics, and less on dance. I wasn't dancing because I just didn't feel like it anymore. It was more so I have an internship now. It's my senior year. I'm trying to, you know, work and do other things and get more involved. And so it was more so of me not quitting because I'm tired and I'm lazy. It was more so I'm trying to help and, you know, develop for my future. And so they did let me keep my scholarship. Despite leaving dance, Markeisha has gained an internship at the hospital giving her opportunities she might not have had time for. Oh, and I've been able to, you know, do amazing things there. Like I've filmed surgeries, I've, you know, filmed so many different things. I've worked with the primary, like, care physicians, and I've just made so many connections there. It's because I have so much time and free time, um, and I don't have to go to practice after school. Like, I go to my internship after school. It, there's just been so many other opportunities for me. For William Penn News Now, I'm Mason Schrader. These athletic scholarships are helping students with the increase in cost of college, but some students are wondering if being overworked in a sport or job on top of going to school is worth chasing a degree. WPNN reporter Cheyenne Hawkes has a story on some students, how are they balancing the with academics with other obligations. Joe Criscola, a music education major and assistant manager to Smokey Row, tells us why he chooses to work and how that affects his schooling. I can go up to 40 hours, which I expect myself going up to that because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I'm sure I'll find things to fix. Working is something I enjoy doing. Um, the other thing is money. I have to afford to be able to live off campus, provide food, and also pay off um, bills. On top of work, Joe is very active in Penn's music program, 
and explains the standards that he is held to and how it's much more work than what people might think. Uh, yes, because my field is so different even from what other education majors are doing because we have those ensembles that we have to be in. It's not like we get a choice. It's, and I think people don't realize how much practice time goes outside of music. With students being this busy, they know the sacrifices they have to make in order to make it work. Uh, playing and practicing instruments is such a vital part of um, succeeding that it does take a toll on, okay, so the first thing that I give up is practice time because I have to have that schoolwork done because I have to get the grade. So letting down Scott once in a while because I don't have as much lesson material as perfect as I could have gotten it is going to suffer. And I know that for sure is going to suffer. Morgan Goslin, a student in sports and recreation management, tells us her story on how softball brought her to Penn. I didn't know anything about Penn. I knew how much the tuition was, 26000 and I got offered 13000 Okay, that's 50%. I could do that instead of going to a state school in Oregon where I'm still going to pay twenty-six grand and only get two, dollars $3,000 to go to that school. Playing any sport takes a toll both mentally and physically on its athlete especially after 16 years of playing. It's to the point now where I'm 21 and I've been playing softball for 16 years. My body's fatigued. My, mentally, my health, mental health is not good. Most of my teammates and other athletes I know would say that. Um, sports make school difficult. They make my relationships difficult with people. I can't support myself. I keep having to call my parents for money. I'm 21 years old. I have a job, I play college softball, and I go to school. Like Morgan may have come to William Penn to play softball, but she has been improving academically and learning to let other things go. Um, I feel like education is super important, especially in our generation, because we're in that mix where, like, okay, like college is really important, mm -hmm. but is it really worth it because of the loans and money? And for Penn, like, I love my professors, I love the school. I have an internship with our athletic director, that's what I want to do in sports management. However, the dedication I have to have to softball is beyond anything I've ever had to do. For WPNN, I'm Cheyenne Hawkins. Although earning a degree while working or playing a sport is extremely hard, once students have that degree, they need to find a place where they can use the knowledge gained during college. WPNN spoke with Career Service Coordinator Debbie Stevens to see what fields are most in need of college graduates. Now, healthcare is really struggling, and they estimate, for instance, 253,000 jobs just in software developing over the next uh, two to three years by 2020. And, but with all of the physician assistants and everything, they have, they make more money than usually a software developer, over a hundred thousand, up to some of them make two hundred and some thousand a year. Stevens also said employers are constantly on the lookout for potential employees with the ability to make tough decisions. Learn how to uh, solve problems or troubleshoot somewhere. Those are highly sought after skills. If you can make a decision, I've had a, a, an employer the CEO of Musco long ago mentioned that he wants people who can make decisions because he, he's running a business. He can't make every decision for every single department and he's, you know, he can't do that. That's why you hire people that can do those things and help you. What happens if you make a bad decision? You look at it, see what you need to do to uh, fix it, and you go on. If you are looking for an internship or just need to be pointed in the right direction of your dream job, Stephen said it's never too late for students to come to the Career Services. Their office sits on the second floor of Penn Hall, room 220. The high cost of a higher education puts stress on a lot of students attending colleges across the nation, with textbook causes at an all-time high, tuition, room and board, and fees steadily climbing. The balancing of work and sports to help pay for a college degree is more necessary than ever. Students are left to question, is the higher cost of a higher education worth it? As they start to enter the workforce, William Penn President John Otteson has some reassuring words for those students still questioning the price of a bachelor's degree. If you look at it as an investment, over the course of a lifetime, if you have a college degree compared to not having a degree, it's, you'll earn a million dollars more. If somebody told you now, you give me $5,000 a year for the next 
few years, I'll guarantee you a million dollars, we would do that in a heartbeat. For everyone here at William Penn News Now, my director, Dino Landucci IV, Mason Schrader, Cheyenne Hawkes, Alexis Corona, and Arthur Luce, we would like to thank you again for joining us as we take a look into the high cost of higher education. We'd also wish to everyone good luck on their finals. And as this year is winding down, have good luck during the summer. For WPNN, I'm Jimmy Ott. Have a great day, William Penn.